Hello everyone, uh, welcome back. Hope you're all having an exciting weekend so far. Uh, we're sitting here, this is our second live stream on our double header today. We are sitting here in the beautiful, beautiful, beautiful Marianas Island chain in the northernmost island. Uh, some of you who are geographists, which I am not, are going to point out, this is not the most northernmost island, but it is the northernmost island with an airport big enough to serve a jet like ours today. So what we're going to be doing this evening is, uh, again, evening for me, it could be a little different depending where you are around the world, is we're basically going to be traveling along the entire Marianas line. Again, I chose a Learjet here are not a Learjet I should say this is a CJ4 for this purpose because I needed something that's going to be a little bit faster given the distances involved between the two uh, islands uh, naturally if anybody would like to go ahead and join us on our live stream uh, again I've got um, my server set to East USA I believe uh, what you're going to want to do under multiplayer settings is make sure that you're set up so that you have all players visible uh, my time of day by the way in case anybody wants to synchronize perfectly with me is I believe we are sitting here really really early in the morning yeah nice and early 5 56 a.m. so as usual we're going to go ahead and get this thing all started and uh, get this kind of, kind of rolling along i'll have a couple things to say as we're kind of flying along today uh, the marianas island change obviously very very important strategically for the united states now uh, it's going to be the uh, room of some dcs stuff that we're going to see in a little while and we're also of course uh, going to be uh going to take a look at some of the historical things too with some of the stuff that went on during world war ii as well so let's go ahead and get this thing started and we will be on our way in just a few minutes now, one of the things I really appreciate about this is this is just such a modern jet. Absolutely everything about this particular jet is uh, designed, basically, in order to make it quick and easy to get this thing started. The controls are super-duper simple. Everything is FADEC controlled. I mean, I just look at the startup procedure. That's it. Once you hit that, it'll actually start it. There's no APU built into this system. Uh, the dispatch is uh, really, really easy to use as far as the avionics settings. It really, it's a slick jet. All right, let's go ahead and get ourselves started. Now, if you're looking for a flight plan, uh, we're going to be Papa Golf Sierra November. Uh, again, this is a Saipan. I think this is a Francisco Ada Saipan International. And uh, like I said, we're going to go to visit the northern part of the island before we start heading to south today. Our cruise altitude is going to vary depending on kind of what island. Uh, obviously, when we're cruising over to Tinian, which is only five and a half miles away, we're going to keep our altitude down at about 1,000. Uh, traveling between Tinian and the uh, much, much further southern island there, which as everybody knows is Rota, that's going to take us a little bit higher, probably up to about 10,000. Then we'll come I'm dipping down at Roto, come Buzz Anderson Airfield, of course, and then land at Guam International, which is a Papa Golf uniform mic. So that's it. My aircraft has started. <laughs> I love that. That's amazing. Let's go ahead and flip my avionics onto regular mode here. Uh, first thing I like to do with this particular aircraft is I like to set everything up. I usually like to do terrain on this side. On this particular one, I always like to go ahead and uh, throw on my weather radar as well, just to make my life a little bit simpler. Obviously, we're not going to have any weather today, so I'm not worried for it. Uh, somebody asks, uh, for Flight Sim 2020 for better performance, would you get a better graphics card, or better CPU? I hate to say this, but but better CPU. Uh, especially if you're doing anything fancy. Uh, one of the things that really limits you is how quickly you can stream in the uh, different stuff that's going to be coming in as far as terrain and graphics goes. If you're going to be going for a very, very, um, again, high settings and everything like that, yeah, graphics card matters, but at the end of the day, without that good performance behind it, you're always going to have issues. All right, so that's all set. I'm going to go ahead and select nav. I'm going to go ahead and select my uh, flight director. We're going to do a flight level change once we get going. I'm not going to touch my flaps until I get going, but I'm going to go ahead and uh, hit the gas. All right, let's go ahead and uh, get rolling, folks. Uh, let's see, what kind of cruising speed we're looking at? Uh, I expect about 250 knots today, yeah. Um, like I said, for the first part of the flight, we'll keep it legal at about 250 because we're going to be at low altitude. Uh, once we do cross over Tinian, of course, uh, we will get up to a little bit higher altitude so we can get a little bit higher speed. Yeah, so for me, Tendi, if you're thinking about some kind of comparison, um, my particular computer, I've got an Intel, it's a 10850K, in case you're curious. Uh, the graphics card on this one, it's a, a NVIDIA 3080, it's just the regular one, it's nothing special like Superclocked or anything like that. And I also have 32 gigabytes of RAM, and everything is solid state. Uh, Settings-wise, I use the default what uh, Microsoft recommended for me, so if it looks fast or it looks slow, you have a fairly good idea of why it looks fast or why it looks slow. And again, um, it works works pretty well for me. I think I just crossed another runway. <laughs> oh, that was embarrassing. There I am uh, chatting away. No, no, I'm on a taxiway. Oh, scared me. No, no. I'm actually not. This is a runway. Ah, sorry, folks. I know I shouldn't be on this runway like this. I should have gone all the way around. Oopsies. Sorry. I'm not always legal. I'm not always legal. 
You know, right, I see there's a big chunk of aircraft waiting for me at the end of the runway, or maybe not waiting for me. At the very least, there is a chunk of aircraft at the end of the runway, so come by or not. Do my little back tacks here and kind of say hello. I can see that the windsock here is definitely favoring the runway we're facing. It looks like we got a bit of gusty wings uh, based on that position. Less than five knots, which uh, doesn't surprise me. I've gone with a nice cherry red uh, CJ here today. Again, my whole uh, Red Sex 4. One of these days, I'll get to actually doing some uh, proper um, make dressing these kind of aircraft up so it has the distinctive little Red 6-4 inside, like, you know, the old Soviet style style circle and everything like that but um i'm not too worried about that today let's go ahead and get our flaps into the takeoff position uh, we have no uh, emergency spoilers on this that i know of that we can quickly enable but that's going to work perfectly fine take a look at the clock uh, i'm already a minute late but uh, that's not too too unusual Oh, I got somebody in an Airbus apparently sneaking up behind me. Go ahead and slow down here. Welcome back, Country Bob. Welcome back, Simon, as well. I, rec I believe that is a Simon Dean. Simon, by the way, has a very, very interesting YouTube channel uh, dealing with near misses involving uh, basically driving around a lorry in England. A very, very interesting subject. All right, we are now ready to go. Um, this is just the standard uh, version of the CJ4. I was going to take the longitude out today, but I wanted to pick something that everybody knew. Okay, let's go ahead and I'll line ourselves up with the runway here. All right, that was a pretty garbage job, but we're already being ridiculous as it is. Go ahead and hold the brakes. Let's go ahead and flip on our takeoff light here. I'm going to go ahead and flip it to a nasty blinky light mode here, just to kind of let everybody know that we're about to do something stupid. And then it's just a matter of pushing the throttle all the way forward. I'm not using any special mods here, except for the Ultra livery pack, which uh, you can locate. I believe they have the Discord page. If you go on Google and type in uh, MSFS, basically a uh, livery pack, uh, you're going to locate that fairly quickly. Uh, for those of you who are joining us, I will take one loop of the island before I go proceed down to Tinian. There's my rotational speed. I'll go ahead and lift the nose up. And go throw up my landing gear. Flaps come up at 160. Flaps up. Nice. All right, I'm going to wait until I'm clear at the end of the runway before I go turning this thing around. This is a lovely time of day. And now we are on the opposite side where we were earlier this morning. Uh, this morning we were down in the Bahamas. At least again, it was morning for me. Depending on what part of the world is, it could be a little bit different as far as that goes. I'm going to go ahead and pull the throttle back and put it into the climb position, although I'm really not going to need climb power for this. I'm going to keep the aircraft relatively low. I'm going to do a quick donut around the island, uh, talk a little history, and then uh, we're going to kind of move. Obviously, I'm not an expert on any of these things. This is just stuff that I know. <laughs> All right, bring us around. Again, you wouldn't normally bank an expensive jet like this, like this, but um, too bad. All right, so this is Saipan. So the, like I said, this is the northernmost uh, island of the uh, Marianas chain. There's actually some islands to the north of us, and one of them did have a runway, but it's not nearly anything big enough for us, us to actually successfully cruise along. I'm already overspeeding the aircraft. Uh, interesting thing about Saipan, of course, is uh, this one goes back thousands and thousands of years. It had a little bit of a Spanish colonial rule a little bit later on. Obviously, you know, the United States came and uh, kind of got this as a pretty groovy deal after the whole Philippines affair. Of course, a so World War II comes around, Japanese invades it, and uh, that whole thing was resolved in late. 1944 with an invasion and uh, one of the reasons i bring any of this up is uh, one of the most interesting landmarks in my mind of saipan is if you actually go all the way past garapan which is what the major city is we just passed on the left all the way in the end of the island we'll be there in just a minute uh, there is a very unique landmark and i just want to kind of point it out to anybody who's uh, not familiar with this particular region who knows you're going to get a little bit of a uh, history today but hey that you know how it goes. Fun story. Uh, back in eighth grade, uh, we used to get these things called book awards. And, you know, like if you were like number one in your class for something, I actually got it in the history book award just because I like, well, we're too so much. In the old days, I had my computer right next to the TV and used to watch the History Channel all the time. You know, this is back in like the Ken Burns Civil War days or like Victory at Say. You know, I grew up on that stuff. So it's just, it's kind of interesting to come back in person here. All right, cruise along. Again, this is a fairly popular tourist spot. You've got all sorts of really, really nice places to stop by. You can imagine uh, trying to land an entire invasion army on this planet, or planet of course, uh, this entire island, how absurd it would be given the tremendous amount of hiding places. And I believe at one point when I was reading one of the histories, they were actually talking about the fact that people were actually hiding in these mountains, in these trees, way, 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 way into uh, years and years past the end of World War II. But anyway, like I said, I just want to share this one landmark with you, and then I'll turn around and I'll we'll get going on our flight flight today. Actually, while I'm doing that, I might as well get everything else set up for myself. All right, my altitude looks pretty good. I'm going to go, my speed's going a little fast, but that's all right. I actually finished a book called uh, Saipan, the Bloody Rock, and it was a very, very interesting history and all the conflict that took place. We actually passed one of the valleys right over here where uh, it was a little intense. Basically, you want to imagine, you know, 10,000 people running at you, basically in a bonsai charge, a little armed. But anyway, let's go take a look at this real quick, and then we'll go spin around. Again, I know, I just, I have to. I feel like there's something important here. Right here, where you see this little mountain cliff that I'm sneaking up on right here, uh, this is basically your suicide rock. 
uh, during the rather than uh, get captured, uh, they said, "Hey, you know, I'm just going to walk off the side of this." And there's actually this little path here you can see in Google Earth, and there's a neat little plaque commemorating the people who basically jumped. And it's I don't know, kind of sad. And you also got your graveyard down here. Okay, enough of that. Let's do some flying. All right, gonna go bring the power up, and we're gonna head ourselves over to Tinian. All right, enough being depressing. Sorry about that. I just felt I had to. All right. Bring ourselves around again. You never fly a jet like this, like this. And let's head over to Tinian. Ah, uh, that's probably a bad sign. <laughs> All right, let's do it. So now what makes this uh, quite a bit different from uh, what we did earlier today is, uh, you know, a very, very lightweight aircraft with aircraft that were um, islands that were very, very close to each other. Unfortunately for us, everything is much further apart here. So it's uh, going to require a little bit more fancy flying on our part. Going to flip on the automatic pilot there. Flip on flight level change mode. And that should get us going up nicely. Of course, uh, what did I set for a speed there? <laughs> Now, the avionics on this aircraft are actually kind of unique. There's nothing quite like it in the rest of Flight Sim. I mean, all these uh, custom panels, you know, have the custom weather radar. I know some of this is just piggybacking off of what they have with the G1000, but it's actually pretty slick from that perspective. I'll go ahead and flip off my lights here. I think I've made myself pretty clear where I'm coming from. All right, so our first destination today is going to be Tinian. Uh, so Tinian, like I said, it's a uh, little neighbor. Uh, there was a presence of uh, Japanese forces in World War II on Tinian, but the most interesting thing on Tinian we're actually going to see in just a minute. And uh, Tinian was the island, by the way, where the atomic bombs were loaded on to B-29s at the end of World War II. So they actually have a very neat memorial where they have basically a bomb pit with a big glass on top of it that shows you exactly where they had to load it onto the actual planes itself. Kind of interesting. All right, I'm actually going to go ahead and level off here. I think this is a more than high enough. We'll do 4,500. Right about... That looks pretty good right there. Nice. Now, this aircraft does not have automatic throttle. So basically, you have a FADEC controlled throttle, but it's not like an automatic throttle like you have in the Airbus or anything like that. Okay, we'll go ahead and take a look at Aida. Goodbye, Aida. Oh, we're traveling about 100 miles away from you today, so it's going to be a bit of a drive for Exceed. Okay. So as we approach Tinian, uh, first thing you want to know here is if you look really, really carefully in the uh, cut of the woods here, there's two very, very long runways. Uh, these were basically the north runways of the actual airport. None of these are in service anymore. So anybody who wants to go ahead and take a crack at landing on an airport that's completely abandoned, uh, feel free to do so. But basically, this whole entire island was one giant military airfield, if you want to imagine it at the time. I'm actually going to zoom in a teeny tiny bit. Yep, you can actually see right where they've got their little memorial down there on the right. Okay, but of course, we're interested in doing our touch and goes, so uh, we're going to be flying right down to here. Uh, this is Tinian International. This is Papa Golf Whiskey Tanko, in case you're curious about where this particular runway is. Again, we're just going to come down. I'm going to do a quick touch and go, and then I'm going to take off and I'm going to proceed down here to Rota. So first things first, we need to go ahead and slow the aircraft down. I'm going to go ahead and disable the automatic pilot, and we're just going to go ahead and bring it down nice and smoothly. Fun fact for anybody who uh, missed my video on this, uh, let me just go switch modes real quickly here to this. But if you actually press the right alt and click on a display, you can get it to pop out. So if you want to be able to actually see exactly what you're doing on a particular display, you can actually push this button so you can see everything that's going on much, much clearer than you could otherwise. Just kind of a neat little trick, especially for those of you who have multiple monitors who like to put things on other monitors at one time. Go back to my regular mode here. There we are. Just a cool trick. Yeah, it was one of those things that I played this program for three months, and then I finally found out there was a button for that. Folks who uh, play the FSX, of course, remember, you can always press, like, Control-1, Control-2, stuff like that. X-Plane fans, um, I don't think we ever had anything like that. All right, there's our first destination right here. Like I said, Tinian International. I think everybody else has uh, kind of gotten themselves fairly organized behind me, so we're on our way. Yep, you can have a really, really good look at the uh, two existing runways right here. I believe DCS is currently working on actually building a... Uh, whole model of all, of all of these islands in the island chain, which is part of our inspiration today. So they'll probably restore those two runways as well. Ha ha ha, exactly. Yeah, I'm glad I was able to help you guys out. <laughs> it's just one of those things where we could do this the whole time. All right, so uh, landing the CJ is a really, really easy process. I always uh, like it, it kind of uh, to, like flying an F-14, because basically we have our little indexer, which is right here, but it's actually not nearly as helpful as you probably want it to be. So what I actually do when I land is I use the indexer located right here. This is AOA. You want your AOA to be 0.6 units. Uh, you can do 0.5 units if you're a little bit braver, but again, I'm going to get slowing down pretty much right away. Um, you just drag them. 
Oh, other computers. I'm not sure if you can drag them to other computers. You can drag them to other monitors, sure, but I don't think that you can actually drag them onto a different computer. I know that there are some networking methods that you can use to kind of hook all that stuff up together, but I'm not familiar with how to do that in this version. I only know how to do it over an X-Plane. All right, let's go ahead and drop our flaps. We're going to go ahead and do our first landing. This is going to be a Tinian International. Again, not a lot of people on this island. I think the total population is something like 3,900 people, whereas Saipan is uh, several tens of thousands. Guam has got even more folks, but we'll see that when we get over there. All right, you can see my indexer says I'm a green circle, which means I'm basically right on target as far as angle of attack goes. But again, like I said, I prefer to use the AOA indexer, which is on my bottom left screen there. Go ahead and start slinging this thing around just a little bit. Again, we're just going to do our touch and go here. Um, my airspeed is just a little bit on the high side. I need to actually reduce it a little bit. And you can also see I'm very high by the PAPI indicator on the right side of the runway. Remember, four whites, you're going to fly all night. Four reds, you're already dead. Two whites, two red, just right. All right, there we go. We've gotten one of the reds back. We're going to go ahead and line this thing up with a big old 2.6. Again, I'm just using the index error on my right there to kind of concentrate on what I need to be doing. If you start seeing the index error uh, start to tell you to go down, it just means that usually you need to add a little bit more throttle. All right, here comes our first touch and go today. I'm going to go lift up the nose. Again, you're looking to hit the touchdown spot. Whoa, careful there, Crunchy Bob. That was a little bumpy. Right on the touchdown spot. Delightful. Ha <laughs> ha. Just slam it up into a takeoff, and we're just going to go rip and back up, and we're going to proceed. For our next leg of the flight, now, we're going to get ourselves quite a bit more altitude here because we're going to be traveling all the way down to Rota, which is a, it's a little bit of a flight. A little bit of a flight. I always joke it's a little bit of a drive, but it's a little bit of a flight for sure. All right, this is a very naughty thing to do, but I've got all sorts of folks basically landing right below me, so I want to kind of get out of their way. All right, going to enjoy my little takeoff again. Not a lot of people live it on Tinian these days. It looks like a really nice waterfall right there. Either that's a mini golf, not sure. Hmm. All right, going to go level ourselves back off here. There we are. Automatic pilot on. And now we're just going to go ahead and climb ourselves up to, like I said, our 11,000 feet or so. Although 10,000 feet is probably a little bit easier. Nice and careful. We're still at takeoff power. I'm going to go ahead and set the engines to climb power. We just put it into this detent, a little click, and you're good to go. All right, down to Rota we go. <laughs> now, one of the reasons I chose uh, the Marianas as well is because it's a great use for this particular type of aircraft. You know, normally what would happen is, you know, I got something a little bit bigger, a little bit faster. You know, we would not have enough runway. If I did something slower, we'd be here for a really long time. Crunchy is really living up to his name. <laughs> exactly. All right, I got a good mess of folks behind me. Let's see who else I can recognize here. Uh, let's see, we have Dean for sure I recognize. Uh, Tom Kitchen I've seen before. I'm just looking around to see who else I recognize. The Pilot B, I recognize you. Again, if I missed you, I am so sorry. I'm just absolute garbage at names. Trust me. Oh, Country Bob I've seen before as well. <laughs> Unfortunately, uh, they've been immortalized in the comments with a, a little bit of a bouncy landing there. Whoop! And we've already hit our, our cruise altitude, which for some reason I forgot to reset. That is so naughty of me. Uh, this is why it's difficult to fly and uh, talk at the same time. Let's go ahead and get there. Oh, I said 22,000 feet. You know, I never liked the way Flight Simulator actually did its little knobs here. That's always kind of annoying in my mind. Vertical speed, we'll set it to about 2,000 feet per minute. Set it all right, about 11,000, like I said. There we go. Vertical speed, up, 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 up. There we go. Now we're going to go vertical. Go ahead and set my detent back into the climb position, and off we go. All right, I got Tom Kitchen uh, sneaking up on my rear here. I don't see anybody in the G91 today like well, we did earlier. <laughs> I wouldn't be surprised. Oh, trust me, we're not ju judging here, J Crunchy Bob. <laughs> we're not judging at all, trust me. I think it's interesting. I keep getting the overspeed warning here. Let me go ahead and lift the nose up even steeper. We'll do 4,000 feet per minute. That should be more than enough to load this aircraft. Well, honestly, this thing is so overpowered. Not that I own one of these or flown one of these in the real world, but at least they fixed the ITT bug. I remember doing this uh, particular aircraft earlier this year and really, really struggling. I think we're about to get run into. Uh, what do we got here? Uh, C-25, I'm about to get cut off. No, it looks like he's uh, going to go ahead and hang out. So the only thing missing here is like the really, really pretty like uh, clouds that you get in the, uh, this part of the Pacific. Let me see if I can go track those down real quick. Let's do broken clouds. Oh, that, that's a lot more clouds than I actually expected here. But the cloud's a little bit above me. Let's go ahead and take this level of clouds. That eh, looks pretty good. Actually, I'm going to put these above my head like this. Isn't it amazing you can do this? Oh, yeah, there it is. That's what I think of when I think of flying over the Pacific. <laughs> oh, that is so awesome. 
this is nice crunchy puffy clouds you know you can always think of lightly you're just sort of sitting there all right let's go ahead and reduce the coverage a little bit that's looking pretty good i'm actually going to take this cloud over here uh coverage zero to grab this cloud level zero cloud level zero and let me just go ahead and grab those nice puffy clouds that i can kind of use. let's crank up the coverage a bit scatter them just a little bit more there we go now, if only real pilots had the ability to go ahead and change the weather dynamically like that, wouldn't that be amazing? All right, we have reached uh, just about our cruise altitude. I'm going to go ahead and set the throttle now to the cruise detent. Click is the best way to go ahead and describe that. But unfortunately, that's going to put us well over 300 knots here. Um, we're actually picking up some precipitation in some of those nice clouds I just created. But um, yeah, I think we'll be okay. Looking straight ahead for those of you who are missing out. Oh, that's Rhoda, which is going to be our next island. Uh, this is a very, very small island. Uh, I don't even think it has a runway on it. Or if it does, it's probably too small for us. But what it does have is it actually is an ADF. So I'm actually going to come down here. And uh, we do have an ADF receiver, believe it or not, on this aircraft. And of course, I'm uh, right there. And I believe the code is uh, 332. So I'm actually going to dial that in right now and see if we can somehow figure out the ADF by the time we get there. Let's see if I could do it that quick. Whoop, overspeed, overspeed, overspeed. overspeed. Go ahead and sneak my way down here. Go to map simples. Ah, we don't have anything in there that I can use. Let's go ahead and escape one more time. Let's see the lower menu. I'll do the upper menu here. Ah, so if you want to see something useless, check this out. You can go to the FMS text page, press the enter key, and it goes, oh, look at this. This is so, no, not really. <laughs> Unfortunately, this information never updates itself, so you can't really do a lot with it, which is kind of a bummer if you ask me. All right, let me go ahead and escape that again. Oops, of course, now I busted it and it's stuck this way, right? Go to upper menu. We're going to flip it all the way down to systems mode. We're going to push, boop, enter, and it's going to go ahead and bring up a regular page. Hit escape, looks pretty good. Eh, that's disappointing, but by the time I figure out exactly how to get to it, I think it'll be too late anyway. Let me go down to nav source, actually. Let's see what happens. Again, I'm just I'm playing around now. Navigate through the menu. Nope, I want to navigate through the options. There we go. Nope, we got VR1 and VR2. I'm still out of the play with this in order to get to ADF mode. Bummer. All right, enough of that. Let's keep flying. All right, road is coming on right off our nose there. This is a very, very, very small island, especially once we get to Guam. It's like, oh my, that's, a, that's quite a bit of island there. I'm going to go ahead and pull the throttle back a little bit. Uh, even though I'm in the cruise setting here, clearly I'm bringing myself into the red. I do fly with damage on, so I don't want to do too much. Oh, look at this. <laughs> I actually, I recognize Lapple Frog now that I think about it. It looks like uh, we have a pretty good hefty number of folks behind us, a lot of C-25s. I would have done this in the longitude, I should have. And it looks like uh, I keep on trucking is uh, struggling a little bit here. I warned you. I warned you. I said we're going to go pretty fast today. All right, so there's nothing to land on on Rota, unfortunately. I'm going to have to say that right now. But if you look right off in the distance, you can probably just start to make out Guam here. Now, Guam is neat because you have two major airports on it. You're going to have Anderson Air Force Base, which I'll talk about when we get there. Basically, uh, think the biggest Air Force Base on this side of this basic ocean. And then, of course, on the further south of that, you've got regular Guam International. And we'll talk about that when we get a little bit closer. But meanwhile, I'm going to go ahead and uh, take a look real quick. I'm going to head back to my FMS. My index page. Sorry about that, folks. Uh, let's go back to my display menu. There's no approach button. This is terrible. Go back to my root page. I'll go to legs, and I can see exactly how far away. Why don't you push random buttons and see what happens? Oh, I love that. That's a great idea. Eh, it's not doing anything. See, my favorite one right here is the cabin pressure dump button. So, like, you know, like, this is a fairly expensive plane, and chances are you're flying around fairly wealthy folks, given the back here. I think we even have a bathroom on this thing. So if I really wanted to mess with them, I could come to the cabin dash and go click. And now I literally just dumped all the pressure, and everybody's ears pop. In the real world, by the way, uh, when you have a rapid decompression of the plane, it starts snowing on the inside of the interior of the aircraft. So, unfortunately, I would have just created some snow. <laughs> I just got a lot of warnings. See, Riskless, uh, you're not necessarily the uh, best person to follow for those kind of things. But again, it's one of those things. Um, there's a great Monty Python sketch, by the way, if you want to see something hilarious later on. Uh, do an airline pilot sketch. And uh, basically, they're sitting up in the front of the plane. It's like, I spy with my little eye. You know, something with the letter C. Cloud you know, because they're just bored, and then they start saying ridiculous things on the PA system, and they make all their passengers uh, start panicking pretty much right away. It's hilarious if you have not seen it before. Again, this is classic Monty Python stuff. All right, there's our island of Rota there. Again, notice uh, no runways whatsoever. We have a pretty distinctive radar base off the left side. <laughs> he says it's okay. <laughs> I actually saw somebody had a would do live stream like D and D games and like you could spend five dollars to like get a potion or something like that and then like you know the potion would like make the bad guy stronger. It was just it was a neat concept, but like I can't imagine how I do that with the live chat and I uh, flight sim here. I'm gonna give myself just a couple more RPM there. Look directly behind me. A nice flying Tom. 
Uh, is Dark Light also very nice flying there? Oh, I'm about to get past here. How you doing? I had to pick the red one, right? Look at this. That is art. You can tell how sensitive everybody has their controls based on how twitchy they are when you watch them in an elevator. If somebody's very much like this, you know their controls are at upset up way too sensitive. This folks either on uh, automatic pilot or uh, they've got really, really well honed controls. Let's take a look over on this side. Looking very, very solid here. Uh, I don't know what's going on here. I think they're trying to race us. And let's go swing over to this side. Look at this. Is this not amazing? Let me get a free picture here. Nice. <laughs> Simon knows exactly. <laughs> I have no mean to alarm you, but there's absolutely nothing wrong with the airplane. Simon knows exactly what I'm referring to here. <laughs> That's so funny. Yeah, if you get a chance, folks, I poke on YouTube, um, Monty Python airline sketch, and uh, you will you will definitely appreciate it. Again, I've made all the jokes about airplane before. Okay, so uh, we're going to be passing over Rota right now. This is the Rota Municipal. I think I'm about to get hit. Nice, nice jet, by the way. I should take this a little quicker. All right, so uh, this is the island of Rhoda. Uh, it's uh, literally so small, it doesn't even have its own runway. Uh, it's basically accessed by island or helicopter, in case you're curious. Fairly well developed. It did have a, some presence during the Second World War as well, but you notice they actually do sustenance farming here, which I think is pretty wild. Ooh, I love the colors. That's nice. Kind of reminds me of like a scuba diving suit or something like that. I don't know how he's keeping up with us. That, that That's pretty impressive there. All right, now we're going to go ahead and start a descent here. We've got uh, 40 nautical miles to get into Anderson Air Force Base. I should say uh, we've got Guam International, which is uh, not too, too far away from us. Uh, again, that's Papa Golf Uniform Mike, for those of you who are kind of curious about that. We do have a VOR there, in case anybody's uh, feeling like uh, getting a little brave there. I think there's uh, two VOR. I think one's actually a Vortac. It's a 111.70 for anybody who wants to give it a try. I'm actually going to do that myself, just because I can. It's always nice to have a backup in case something goes wrong. 111.70. Let's go ahead and throw that into my nav one. I'm going to go ahead and uh, do a heading hold real quickly. I'm going to set it like this, and we're going to flip on heading select mode, and this aircraft should stay pretty much straight. All right, let's see if it works. This time, definitely. All right, that's another amazing Monty Python sketch, by the way. All right, we should be able to go right to now. Hey, it worked! Look at that! Now we got VR navigation, too. Sweet! Unfortunately, I don't see the DME on here. I must be completely blind. We'd have to actually tell this over here to go onto that mode as well. Ah, bummer. It's all right. Cool. But at least we have, uh, we figured something out, right? So I don't feel too, too bad here. All right, we should have done this in the citation here. Okay, so take a look direct out the window. Uh, this is Guam. This is the biggest island of the Marianas chain. Uh, again, this one's very well known. It's very well populated. It's uh, basically, it's desperately trying to be a commonwealth or its own country. I think uh, just in the last two years, they basically petitioned the U uh, UN saying, hey, uh, can we get some uh, special stuff here? Uh, one of the fun things about Guam, of course, is everybody thinks of Guam, at least in the United States. Like, I don't know what it is internationally, but for us in the U.S., everybody's terrified of the snakes. And it's uh, kind of a thing. <laughs> I'm sorry for a trick. If you need clarification, uh, just ask, and I'll try to do the best I can to explain things. Uh, one of the interesting things here is... Um, amazing population of snakes there's this thing called the brown snake that has literally wiped out most of the bird species on the island and it's a snake that wiped out most of the bird species on the island so, you know not some fancy other bird or anything like that so uh, people at least in the united states have this impression it's like oh big snakes big spiders i don't want to go there but guam of course is a very huge military destination it's also a huge uh, tourist destination as well all right let's start getting this thing going down so i'm gonna go ahead and uh, pre-select my altitude here uh, we'll go ahead and select uh, field elevation, uh, believe it or not, is uh, basically sea level, so it's going to be 1,000 feet, but they ask us to go to 1,800 feet, if I recall correctly. But I'm not going to do it just yet, because I want to get just a little bit closer. Take a look at my uh, little distance measuring devices here. Again, this is one of the nice things. We've got about 29 nautical miles, that's going to get us there at 1620, or 629, I should say. Now, interestingly enough, oh, that's because it's local time. That makes sense, because we started at 540 in the morning. All right, let's take a look at how the folks behind us are doing. Nice. I love the use of the citation. I'm surprised nobody showed up in the F-15. Uh, Crunchy Bob, what are you flying that can somehow keep up with us, yet it seems to have a propeller? Oh, easy there. Negative Gs. So um, there's this great thing called the Vomit Comet, if you've never seen it. Uh, basically what they do is they go way, way, way up, and then they go down like in a parabolic arc. And uh, when they do that, they create basically the sensation of free fall on the back of the aircraft to train you know, astronauts or people making music videos like OK Go. And that's kind of what that trajectory kind of reminds me of. All right, we got uh, Joel sneaking up on us right here. It looks pretty good. Give us a little wing wiggle. Hello, sir. I'm looking pretty good, pretty good. Let's see what else we got. Check on my other side. Laffle Frog again. Amazing formation flying there. Thank you for turning your lights on. That's awesome. Longitude. Thank you. It's not a citation. I always make that mistake. Oh, it is a longitude. I don't know why I come up. Well, that's all good. That's all good. Hmm. Uh, that's definitely something I would do. Okay, let's get to Guam. 
All right. If you take a look out your front window at your 12 o'clock low, uh, you have Anderson Air Force Base. Uh, Anderson Air Force Base, for those of you who are curious, is uh, one of the largest Air Force bases basically in the center of the Pacific like this. Yeah, I don't get that. It must be something about the way you've got it set up. Or you have, like, the uh, special mod for it. But basically, uh, this was, if you ever think about the Vietnam War and you think about, hey, where did those B-52s go after they were done Operation Linebacker? Um, if you had to guess, uh, this is where they were coming from. As a matter of fact, as we cross over, I will show you where they basically kept squadron after squadron after squadron of B-52s all lined up in their own private little hole. It's, it's amazing. If you want to talk about increasing the population of the island, you know, if they bring in a marine battalion, it literally doubles. It's insane. All right, let's go down. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to set myself to flight level change mode. Of course, we can't do a flight level change at 290 knots. I'm going to gently pull the throttle back. The nose is immediately going to start coming down. I'm going to go flip on my landing lights. So for some reason, I can see my body all of a sudden. Ah, huh, I've never seen that happen to me before. That's new. It's like I've lost myself. How you doing there? Well, uh, eh, it's got the glasses right, but um, I'd never have the microphone that far away from my mouth. I'd have it right up against there because I know better. Okay, let's continue. Oh, this is new. Thanks, Microsoft. <laughs> All right, let's go ahead and increase my, uh, land my flight speed because I need to be doing less than 250 under this altitude, naturally. All right, looks pretty good. Maybe if I do one of these things. <laughs> Uh, does anybody happen to know the button? Oh! Uh, uh, duh. I mean, I wasn't playing Phasmophobia this evening, but uh, it starts making me wonder. All right. So now we're going to go ahead and cruise down. We're going to say hello to Anderson Air Force Base. I'm not going to do a touch and go at Anderson. I'm just going to do a quick little flyby. And then, of course, we're going to swing around and head right back here. Uh, Guam, of course, like I said, it is the big islands when it comes to uh, the islands that are located down here in the Marianas Island chain. Uh, this one, like I said, huge Air Force presence, a very, very large fight. The fight in Guam was a little more straightforward than the fight up on Saipan, uh, which we started our flight from today. But again, it was, it was messy and it was bloody. All right, I've just been cut off again. That's all right. How you doing? <laughs> See, unlike us, he actually gets an APO. Where'd he go? Oh, it's the ghosts. All right, let's take a look behind us. All right, dark lights are coming down. I see Simon sneaking up on my left there, my port side. Aerial cruise is nice and high. Oh, we got Crunchy Bob swinging down. Everybody's uh, coming on down. All right, let's say hi to Anderson Air Force Base on our way down here. Again, those of you looking for the touch-and-go experience, feel free to set down. But if you actually look really, really closely all throughout here, each one of these little spots held a different B-52. So if you want to imagine the sheer number of people and machines and airplanes located here during the Vietnam War, it's just staggering. It's, it's, it's unbelievable. Absolutely unbelievable the amount of stuff they crammed into this one airport. But like I said, we're actually landing over here today, so I'm not too, too worried about that. All right, kind of I'd swing down. Other fun things to know about Guam is, like I said, it's the territory of the United States. Uh, they get to send us uh, one of their delegates, uh, but unfortunately, uh, not delegates, uh, they get to send us a representative, but they can't vote unless they're in committee. I know for folks who are international, it's like, oh, so what? It's like, eh, it's a big deal to the folks who live there. Hi there. <laughs> All right, dropping below 3,000. Again, uh, make sure you get a good look at this airport. This is unbelievable. Uh, when I was originally planning this flight, I was considering taking stun planes out, but they were just a little too slow for distances like this. And you can see, like I said, every single one of these was a little siding for a different plane. It's just, it's amazing to think. And then to get to where they needed to go, they basically needed to go this way for six and a half hours, do their thing, and then come all the way back and get refueled two or three times during the whole mission. I actually read a really, really interesting uh, memoir. Uh, I think it was uh, When Penguins Burned. Uh, for those of you looking for something that talks about B-52s. And uh, he had some pretty interesting comments about it. Again, he was uh, the bombardier, so to speak, or the radar navigator, as they're known as. All right, that's a pretty good altitude right there. And you get a pretty good look at Anderson. Like I said, I'm not going to land here. But the incredible thing is the whole entire military base is basically right here. And you'll see every little teeny tiny street just kind of hanging on here. But again, just look at the absolute scale of this place. is incredible. All right, I'm going to bring some power back in. We'll start setting ourselves up for our landing. So we're going to do a visual approach today. I'm not going to do anything too, too fancy here. Looks like uh, Glancy Bugle is uh, going for it. Yeah, you can see all the sightings, just like I was promising a moment ago. And you can see, for apparently, there's somebody already down there, which is kind of interesting. Probably a military flight of some kind. Interesting thing is, uh, one of the things I read about this airport in the real world is this whole runway is banana-shaped. It's something that you can't really see here, but you kind of go down, and then you got to go back up, basically, when you land, which is really, really sketchy. All right, let's go ahead and kill the throttle, and uh, let's get ready to land. Like I said, I'm just going to be coming up on 2-4 uh, left here. That's uh, going to be the left side runway. It's going to be the one basically facing us as we're kind of cruising along here. 
Look at the size of this tent city. Can you just imagine all the people living here? It's just, ah, it's crazy. Absolutely crazy. You know, when we do a, like a flight over Syria at some point, you know, it's going to be kind of interesting taking a look at all the developments. Everybody and their family is just row after row after row of houses. A miniature city. And of course, then you got the rest of Guam as well, where uh, the normal folks live. The hoi polloi, if you will. All right, let's put this thing on the ground. Turn on my Lindy Galay. Go ahead, stick my head out. I swing out nice and gently, kind of come nice and wide. I'm not going to worry about anything about, you know, instrument procedures or anything like that. Those of you guys looking for a challenge, uh, feel free to try an ILS approach or something like that. I'm just going to keep it nice and easy. This is a little tiny CJ. This is not exactly a fast aircraft. By fast, I mean in the sense that uh, there's not sudden changes. All right, again, you're going to see uh, two runways when you get there. I'll go ahead and zoom in so you all can see pretty clearly. You got the control tower right there on your left. You got the 24 left. You got the 24 right. 24 right is a slightly longer runway, but I'm taking 24 left because it's closer to the terminal. How's it going, Roger? Go. Take a look at my window here. Looks pretty good. I love that you can actually see the storage compartment right there. <laughs> that's just a neat touch. I believe that's actually a radar compartment. I misspoke. All right, slow down. Drop the landing gear. We're going to be looking for three green lights. Uh, right now, all my lights are red, which simply means they're in transit. Wait for the light. Kunk, kunk. Three green. Cool. Go ahead and drop my flaps. We are extremely high. Okay, like I was saying a little bit earlier when we did a little touch and go, uh, you're going to be looking... By the way, if anybody wants to join us for the big picture at the end, I'll be uh, chilling right next to where the control tower is. Uh, so basically what we're going to do here is we're going to fly just like we did before. We're going to use the indexer, which is that little tiny thing right there on my right. You're basically trying to keep it with a green circle. Uh, if you're looking for the easier way to do it, however, there's this little indexer right there. I'm looking at it. You can see I'm at 0.3 right now. Try to keep that as close to 0.5 as you can get, and you'll find that this aircraft is very, very easy to land. We do have thrust reversers, but I'm kind of terrified to use them. And getting a little low, but I'm not terrible here. All right, you can see I'm right at a green circle right now. I'm about 0.5 on the AOA, and I feel like I'm sinking, so I'm going to give it a little bit more thrust here. And I'm starting to lose the end of the runway. Yeah, we're getting a little low here. Sorry, hotel tourist. Sorry. My bad, my bad, my bad. There we go. Now we're a little bit better. I need to tip my health down so I can actually see. There we go. Right there. That's the green circle we're hoping for. Again, when you're landing an airliner, if you see the nose starting to dip down below the runway, just push the throttle forward and vice versa. Give it just a little more throttle here. Oop, that was a little too much. Again, this aircraft's got quite a bit of thrust. Um, Laffle Frog, check gear, check gear, check gear. He's not going to hear me. Check gear, check gear. Uh, we're in the East USA server if you're interested. All right, nose has got to come up. And we're looking to touch down on that gigantic rectangle right there. Ah, oh, I was short. Sigh. Sorry about that. Sorry, wheels. Man, the brakes on this thing are dynamite. Uh, we are at PGUM. That's Papa Golf Uniform Mike. All right. If I was a little more efficient, I would have taken my first taxiway. There we go. All right, let's go take our picture. Ba -ba -ba. I have to do this really aggressive turn, but it's not so hard in an aircraft like this. I love it when people beat me. <laughs> All right. <laughs> We're going to go sneak over here and find a nice good spot to take our picture here. Not bad. Oh, got to shut off my uh, landing lights here. That's very rude to leave your landing lights on. There we go. <laughs> Sorry, man. I was a little slow. Well, actually, YouTube was a little slow. I was perfectly fast. All right. Got to go sneak over here. I'm going to go find... Uh, Simon seems to know where we're going, so I'm going to go head over there. All right. Just take a look around. Oh, there's some guy walking over there. Oh, let's head over to the control tower. I love these engines. They're like jet engines. Well, obviously the jet engines, but they're like just go engines. They're not like kind of engines. It's actually a very interesting engine on this one. It's a combination axial and centrifugal flow turbojet. Good stuff. All right, that looks like a good spot right there. All right, gonna go sneak right here. Everybody seems to know where we're going, but I don't. Ah, I like that little blue aircraft right in front of where the air traffic control tower is. Gonna go sneak in front. Is that a like hot dog colors? Check that out. Love that. It looks like we have a bit of a military version of the jet here. Excuse me. Sorry. 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 Clunk. I got insurance. Don't worry. 
All right, looks like a good spot right there. And bring us in for a stop. Sorry, hitting the brakes. Okay, anybody who'd like to get in the picture, find yourselves somewhere behind me, and I'll go ahead and uh, set ourselves up. Uh, meanwhile, I'll go ahead and uh, start checking to make sure everything else is okay. Got a master warning here. All right, let's see how we're doing. It's so weird to see this many dollars worth of expensive jets all just kind of parked here. This is a little crazy here. All right. Oh, oh he's got to get out of my picture. Ah! I like how this guy's basically slewing around. I love that. Careful! Wall! Wall! All right, we got uh, Ariel Cruz is sneaking up here. Oh, I love that taxing job right there, Joel. <laughs> this is pretty fun. Oh, it's so good. Oh, let's see if I can zoom out enough to get everybody here. Oh, boy. Oh, that's what it is. Oh, thank you so much. Uh, German Colors, by the way, was a response. Sorry, I missed it. This is a lot of expensive aircraft all in one spot. I can't wait till they have to untaxi us later. All right, I'm going to go ahead and hold it steady. I think I'm losing somebody off on my left here. All right, I'll take my initial picture here. That's the German colors over there. I gotta see. Try to. Oh, okay. I think I got a lot of folks there. Cool. All right. So as usual, we like to do uh, the Q and A at the end of every one of these live streams. Uh, does anybody have any questions on anything related to uh, flying aviation? Uh, if you have any questions for me, if there's any particular video you'd like to add, I'll see kind of coming up. Like I said, I got some really, really, really hardcore technical stuff coming up in the next week. Oh, somebody said, "Wait a minute." <laughs> Hold tight for a second. Uh, so if anybody have any questions, like I said, in the next couple of weeks, we're going to be getting some really kind of technical topics like performance, fuel planning, stuff like that. I love those topics because it makes my game better. And it makes you because know, you have something new to do as a pilot, but uh, again, that's probably not for everybody. All right, time to take a quick look around. I think I'm happy with that picture. All right, there. I'm gonna get a little bit of that plane on my right. Got it. Okay, so now what we're gonna do is, like I said, if you have any other questions, uh, next stream is two weeks away. Uh, we always do uh, streams in two-week intervals. Uh, this just makes it easy. Today, I did a double header because I hadn't done it in a while. All right, so um, we're going to go ahead and do a little encore here. If uh, nobody has any questions, again, if you have any questions during encore, feel free. So uh, what we're going to do is uh, we're going to go buzz Anderson Airport and uh, tear the wings off the plane. So I think that should be a nice, uh, expensive use of uh, particular expensive airplanes here. <laughs> All right, let's go ahead and uh, waste our aircraft here. I got a great picture for everybody. I'll make sure that gets posted with the same. Uh, Retro asked, am I a commercial pilot? Oh, God, no. <laughs> I am as uh, not pilot as you could possibly imagine. I did the uh, student pilot thing uh, years and years ago. did tons and tons of hours. I got a little bit of time flying helicopters. I've got uh, tons of time flying uh, Cessnas. It's unbelievable. But I never did the commercial thing and anything along those lines. All right, let's go ahead and dip those flaps down. Uh, let's see if there are any other questions. Uh, next, uh, we already answered that one. Okay, let's uh, waste a perfectly good airplane here. That way, I don't get any credit in my flight simulator, by the way. If you crash your airplane, you, know, you don't get any log hours. So something just to be advised of. All right, let's push that throttle all the way forward, and let's waste this plane. <laughs> I recently started using little nav maps since you posted that first video. Is there a better way to get the flight plans to sync with the sim? The sim doesn't appear to... Okay, okay, okay. So, um, uh, Doe basically asks inside of Little Nav Map, um, why is it that the approaches don't necessarily sync? Uh, one of the trickiest things you're going to run into is the fact that the um, navigational data is constantly, constantly being updated, either by Microsoft or by the folks over at Little Nav Map. So, what you're going to have to do is every time Microsoft puts out a major update, you're going to have to redo all of your data in Little Nav Map because Little Nav Map actually pulls the data out of Flight Sim. If you haven't pulled the data out of Flight Sim yet, then you're going to have to do that step. Otherwise, Otherwise, you're, um, like I said, nothing will synchronize between uh, your approaches and your plans and your airports, even magnetic deviation, which uh, becomes kind of a tricky problem as um, you'll run into from time to time. So um, with all the approaches, like I said, uh, you definitely have to make sure you're getting the data out of Flight Sim each time, like you get a big update. Otherwise, the approaches won't be up to date. And another thing you got to watch out for, too, is um, just because you can find a chart for approaches doesn't necessarily mean that that particular approach is uh, represented in Flight Simulator either. I've uh, found that problem, especially in European maps, uh, where I just cannot, for whatever reason, you know, find a particular approach. You know, it's got a weird little letter or something like that. All right, let's uh, break this plane. Again, if anybody has any other questions or requests for uh, specific videos or anything, feel free to throw them into the chat as I um, wreck this plane here. You know, it's only a several million dollar plane. I'm sure nothing bad will happen if I take it up to full speed and pull back as hard as I can with it. And I'm going to go ahead and kill the power a little bit because I want to do this nice and dramatically right where the runway is. Oh, I feel sorry for this plane. This thing's so expensive and I'm about to trash it. 
I will do some maps in the future. Um, you'll see some more stuff with Little Nav Map in about two weeks. Uh, once we start doing the more advanced navigation, Little Nav Map is a spectacular plotting program. Like it does range rings, it does a line of bearings and stuff like that, and it's absolutely awesome. All right, here we go. Anderson Air Force Base. <laughs> Again, feel free to throw out some things as I'm doing my little run here. Yeah, I hear you beeping at me. I'm going to take your wings off anyway, though. Little nav map's pretty cool. I'm really glad I found it. I used to use something called Plan G, which was also pretty good. I think they're still around as well. Overspeed. Overspeed. The aircraft is buffeting so bad. All right, full power. Overspeed. And we're not going to land. We're just going to go right into the vertical. Here we go. Overspeed. Overspeed. <laughs> Say goodbye to those wings. <laughs> Uh, both, uh, neither of the flights, them. yeah, a pilot B, a lot of times what happens with that is, um, you're going to run into situations where an RNAV approach is either out of date or in date and they haven't caught up. If you're looking for the most up-to-date navigational information you can possibly get your hands on, basically what you're going to have to do is you're going to have to try to track down, um, I'm just thinking real quickly, oh my gosh, I'm losing that, Navigraph, that's who they are, it's N-A-V-I-G-R-A-P-H, they will give you up-to-date information that you can actually use inside of your flight simulator that's going to be a completely like i said it's up to date again i sound a little redundant there but it's not too too bad guam international whoops and i'll take us right back to where we were uh, does anybody have any other questions before we kind of call it a night i really wish you could actually see the damage that my aircraft uh, just experienced as the uh, wings probably came clean off and the airplane kept going down the runway but the wings kept flying kind of a thing all right, looking to see if there's anything else coming through. Anything else coming through? Now, the interesting thing is I have a 30-second delay, so it's like, uh, okay. <laughs> and we're back. <laughs> All right, awesome. Have a great night, everybody. Uh, if there's no other questions, again, uh, if you want to keep an eye on what I do, I'll always check my community page. Uh, the community page on YouTube, you just go to me on my channel, and there's a little thing that says community, and I, like I said, I keep that up to date pretty much all the time, so uh, you'll be able to see kind of what's coming up. Our next live stream will be about like, two weeks away. I'm thinking about something with military aviation, but I haven't quite decided, and again, I ask people all the time what they want to see. They wanted to see some island hopping. I thought this would be a pretty solid use of it. Other than that, have a wonderful night, everybody. Uh, stay safe, obviously. We still got a pandemic going on. Uh, could it land if the wings fell off? <laughs> there's actually a great, uh, if you want to see another funny thing tonight, there's a great comedy sketch. Uh, I think it was an Australian TV show where we called The Front Fell Off. So if you look that up, it's uh, actually pretty entertaining. And um, <laughs> yes, a paper's right out, but it, it, it's so Australian. It's awesome. All right, folks, have a great night. See you soon.